Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you are having a good time at the AW, uh, at this summit. But day one, if you attended, you might have heard how Airflow is making life easier for everybody. You also heard many engineers from different organizations talking about how Airflow made their lives easy, operationalized their ETL systems, ran petabyte scale data processing, right, using Airflow. If I draw an analogy with crawl, walk, and run, all such examples were like people were really running with Airflow, they made it work. But there's a world out there who are still thinking about taking the first step, crawl and walk with Airflow, right? So this topic takes you back 15 years from now when similar Apache Software Foundation launched something called Hadoop. Apache Hadoop was a poster child back then which kind of uh, promised solving distributed processing at scale. Right? And back then, any of the animalish names that you heard probably had something to do with the Hadoop ecosystem, right? So Uzi, fun fact, Uzi means maintainer of an elephant. And again, the, it goes back to Hadoop, the toy named after duck cutting son, right? Now, what we will do over here is we'll talk about how you can help customers to migrate from Uzi workflows into Apache Airflow and run with Amazon EMR. It's about me. Uh, I'm a principal architect at AWS. I've been here for seven years now. Uh, typical day job, I do advisory and transformation, um, mostly in data and analytics space. And not during the day job, but to make sense and be socially relevant, I picked up nuances of American football. So this is me standing in front of the US Bank Stadium, supporting my home team, the Minnesota Vikings. So, and after that, I still like to code, yeah? So being 22 years in the industry, I still love to code, and that is why you have one utility in front of you, which I will talk about, right? Right. So let's go to the motivation and need for having this. So any data strategy, requires greater emphasis on data architecture and the data platform. The data platform needs to be forward-looking, and it should be accommodating any change, whether it is complexity or scale, and support polyglot access patterns, right? So whether you are doing a migration which calls for a data-first approach, where you kind of want to migrate all the data, catalog it on the public cloud, throw in a bunch of uh, modern database engines on top of it, and get your users going. Or you choose workload-specific migration strategy, right? where you pick up any workload which you want to move and see the promise that cloud delivers. right? But either strategy, it is very important to take decoupling storage and compute, and then decoupling workflow management out of it. So if you see Apache Uzi or any of such workflow scheduler systems, they were tightly coupled with the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, Uzi is there so long Hadoop is there. So you need to take that out so that you have one less ball in the air to juggle during your cloud modernization journey. So briefly, uh, Apache Uzi is a workflow management system uh, very tightly integrated with uh, Hadoop jobs. And it is expressed in XML. So love and hate relationship with XML, but yeah, I, I liked it, I still like it. So scalable, reliable, extensible. So it has been there, uh, customers are running uh, their production workloads still using Apache Uzi. And uh, those are the customers who are looking to get a predictable way to migrate from the on-premises Hadoop cluster to public cloud. I'll not bore you with Apache Airflow, everybody knows by now what uh, Apache Airflow is, but the salient point that I want to make out is Apache Airflow, in addition to be able to run Spark and other Hadoop jobs, it can connect to other provider packages and you can use it to run any ETL or any pipeline using the operators and connectors available. So this is how uh, Uzi workflow looks. So if you pay close attention to some of the important notes, so it, is, uh, it does have a start where it says where to begin the workflow with. It has actions, so, and every other action is kind of 
relates to what Hadoop can do. So over here you see Hive action. Uh, the other actions uh, are pig, uh, flume, scoop, and so on and so forth. So uh, this is how the XML is structured to allow you to author Uzi jobs, which will be run in the Hadoop cluster. Now here is a representation of the Airflow DAG. So this DAG came out by running this converter, right? So what you see over there is um, a DAG, and we have an uh, operator called EMR Submit and Monitor Operator, which kind of runs uh, the same action on Amazon EMR. Now, while searching for anything that is available on the internet, I do always, because there, there ought to be something which was already thought of. So I stumbled upon this great utility, which was worked upon by engineers at Polydia and open source by Google. However, it was tightly coupled to work with Google's data proc. Google's data proc is kind of, I won't define uh, the way they do, but yeah, it's a cloud a big data platform provided by uh, Google. So. A basic building block of the converter design was to read or pass through the workflow app or the Uzi XML and break down into nodes, and each node will have this name, attribute, and elements. Then construct the nodes as workflow objects, right? And then draw the dependency, and voila, you have the airflow bag at the end of the tunnel, right? So I took all the heavy lifting that Google already did, and then injected all the changes that is required to make it work with Amazon EMR. So Amazon EMR is a cloud big data analytics platform provided by Amazon to run petabyte scale processing at scale. Now there's a fundamental difference between how Amazon EMR lets you interact with the cluster. So one of the ways is steps. It's called Amazon EMR steps. It is a kind of an execution unit which you can now use to interact with the cluster. Of course, you can do it by in a, connecting to the master node, but the fundamental difference between other Hadoop offerings and EMR is that you have a unit of execution called EMR steps. Now for that to work, we had to make some changes to the templates, the Jinja templates. So if you see on the left, uh, the data proc version looked like there was a data prop pig operator they used, and the template looked like this. On the right side, if you see, that's the EMR equivalent. So this is a single operator which takes in the argument as the job type that you want to run. And essentially, what it does is it runs command runner.jar and then executes the Hadoop job type that you are asking it to run. So if you see the same EMR, submit and monitor step operator is used on both places. On the left, it is running a HDFS, DFS command. And on the right, it is running a Hive script. So in Amazon EMR, there is a concept of application type. Uh, one of the application type is Hive script. You could have a Spark submit, et cetera, and et cetera. All right, so let's move to a demo real quick. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go through an example of how we added support for Uzi bundles. So uh, the current code base, uh, open source by Google, it has a uh, capability to only pass Google, uh, Uzi workflow. But what we did is we added uh, support to have coordinator and bundle. So think about Uzi bundle as containing one or more coordinators and one or more coordinators will execute the workflow. So the entire tree is now something that you can easily transform using this converter. So what we'll do is we'll try to uh, run one such example. So let's look at this bundle. So if I do this, this is how a bundle looks like. So if you see, it has a bunch of uh, properties and two coordinators that it is trying to run. And if I expand one of the coordinators, you will see that it is trying to run a workflow. And there are two of them, right? So what we'll do is we'll try to run this converter and see what it does for us.
So what it's trying to do is, it is going through all the node elements and trying to parse and understand what it needs to do to convert into Airflow DAG. And again, any of the unknown application type or something that it encounters that it does not understand, it will be replaced by something called dummy operator. So uh, if you at all see dummy operator, that means this converter did not understand what to do with such Uzi node elements. It's a fairly big uh, bundle and uh, workflow. So if you see this is going on, what we'll do is I'll show you how it looks like when it gets converted, and we'll come back to this again. So I'm using Amazon MWA to run this. Uh, just a second. So I'm using Amazon MWA to run this whole demo. So uh, if you listen to John, who talked about uh, how and why we built MWA, so it makes it easy to run Airflow on AWS. So we are running this. So it has passed all the actions and sub workflow, and what it did is it generated the Airflow DAG, two of them, which is outreach and outreach transactions. So if I click on this, so there you go. So this is the rendition of the Uzi workflow, the first one, and it says, kind of, it picks up the name, whatever it was, and lays out in front of you to run, right? Now what I'll show you is the other one. As I said, it is a fairly complex and big workflow. Look at this, okay. So let me just zoom it out for you. So this converter read all the nodes and placed it as Airflow DAG, and what you see is a bunch of folks going on. They are joining. I should have picked a smaller one, anyway. Yeah, so if you see, this all our folk and join happening, and there are so many hops. Think about if somebody was to author this manually, because decade-old programs, they do not have intent behind why the code was written. You only have a workflow, and now you have to deal with it. So this is how this converter actually helps customers to predictably plan migration and run on Air, Apache Airflow. So what we'll do is, since I talked about running, so we will make sure that we run while we take the questions after this, but. Let's do this thing again. So it has converted everything, as you see. So what we'll do is run another example. So this is how you run a conversion. Okay. So this is this example wherein we have a simple workflow which has four Spark nodes. Two of them or three of them is forked out and it uh, comes back to uh, a cleanup step at the end. So before I do this conversion and copy, what I should be doing is kind of choose the EMR cluster where we want to run this. Okay, so this Amazon EMR, so this cluster is waiting for any steps, so what we'll do is we will take this, and in the conf properties, we will change this with this, run this. And then There you go, let me copy this back to the DAC folder. It is copied. So this is the EMR cluster. So right now if you see, there are no steps out here. 
So let's go to the DAG that we just converted and pushed to S3. So I hope this reflects the correct code. Okay, so this 602. 602, so this is the right cluster. What we'll do is we will trigger this DAG. And if you see this, it's queued now, this is running, so we'll wait for it to appear over here. Let's see, there you go. So what it did is it now submitted the EMR steps onto the cluster that was configured in the configuration.properties. So this way, what happened essentially is within a, under a minute, what we did is we converted the UZ workflow, selected the EMR cluster of choice where it should run, and now it is running all the things as mentioned in the DAG. There you go. So after this completes, again, this will be forked to run three more Spark nodes. And this is how you can uh, easily and uh, convert Uzi workflows into Apache Airflow DAGs and uh, yeah, make customer happy and run. So uh, just to give an idea, so this was uh, kind of one of the output that came out when I was discussing with the customer who was having around what, 1,000 DAGs and running a critical workflow and they wanted to quickly go and get it running. And um, they understood the promise of EMR, but they did not have that much bandwidth to go from Uzi to more of an airflow kind of thing to help their uh, modernization journey. So this is how, so if you see, this is forked, and I think this will come here. It's still running. I'll come back to this again, but yeah, for now, what we'll do is we'll go here. All right. Oh. Let's swap display. All right, I'll keep it here. So yeah, so what you can uh, see is uh, the converter code is forked now. So I did fork it from the original repo. The reason for not pushing it back there is because there are so many of intrusive changes done and it's uh, kind of will be a nightmare to uh, re release it upstream. So both Google and Amazon, they uh, kind of came up with this uh, idea of having it uh, as a fork. So please see this utility. And what you saw is we easily converted a coordinator and bundle parser, and then uh, a single airflow operator for EMR uh, to run the entire thing. So any changes that you want to make, uh, this simple change to the operator, whether it's tomorrow it is deferable or something new, you can make changes to this template and uh, everything will be converted in a single shot. Yep, yeah. so um, any questions? And I'll leave you with this another article wherein now you can have Airflow work in conjunction with other serverless orchestration engines like AWS stuff functions uh, to make it more complex and extend it to run uh, your workflows the way you want it to be. So you can uh, enjoy the best of both worlds. So the AWS stuff functions is a kind of a serverless orchestration engine provided by AWS with native integration to almost all these services. So. Yeah, go check it out. Uh, Step Function is another great tool, uh, and we have a bunch of other schedulers. But yeah, if Airflow is something, uh, your primary uh, workflow management platform, check this article out, uh, which can help you understand how you can extend it uh, to use the other uh, services from AWS. All right, thank you. So any questions? Awesome, thank you, Devankar. Uh, any questions from the audience? Um, so, is this converter uh, good to just read the XML files? Let's just say our destination is not EMR, uh, so can it just read 
and let's just say we want to convert the uh, you know convert to DAG uh, some of the source stuff like let's say reading from uh, from an Oracle database and uh, then uh, writing to HDFS instead of that if you want to replace it with let's say writing to a file system uh, can can the converter do that or I mean is it it's the converter I, I'm imagining like a, a Python script or something yeah yeah. So basically, if you see the design and implementation of this uh, converter utility, it has uh, something called a mapper, converter, and then the templates. So right now, this converter has a, a kind of a ability to understand the parsing part of the workflow. So whether uh, if you are connecting to, let's say, Oracle, but using the Hadoop uh, as a platform, mm -hmm. whatever means you are using, it will be picked up. Now, the point is, if you want to make it uh, work like you just described, uh, it would be a matter of uh, selecting that converter and the mapper and injecting your changes to the template. Uh, so this is what I did uh, to make it work from uh, data proc uh, to EMR. So tomorrow, if somebody wants to do with uh, Azure's HD Insight, for that matter, uh, they can easily pick up, uh, see what makes uh, the other cloud data platform different, inject those changes, and get it going. So, so yeah, open source power, I mean, the heavy lifting is done. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to just uh, do some cosmetic changes to make it work to your advantage. But yeah, you can. Okay. So, but the, you know, like Airflow has the concept of connectors and things like that, right. uh, like operators. So it automatically knows which operator to use, or is that something that we are templating? So that's a template. So okay. uh, as I uh, said or showed you, Google had the data proc pig operator, right? So there oh, are a bunch right. of operators that yeah. uh, uh, every cloud provider understands and provides you. Okay. Uh, this was an attempt to streamline and make it single. So there is only one operator. So there is uh, yeah. not much change anywhere. Yeah. It's just that the application type is sent as a parameter and uh, the same operator works for any of the application types, whether it is Presto, Trino, um, Spark, Scoop, Flume, yeah. you name it, and you got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Great. Hi. Uh, thank you for the talk. It, uh, um, yeah, rings a lot of bells in my daily job. Uh, I was curious. You said um, by default, if you migrate from a Spark job, it will generate a data proc job, and you modified it to. Uh, generate an EMR job or EMR operator. No, so uh, yeah, so what I meant is uh, this is the fork. Yeah. If you go to the parent repo, that is Google's that works with data proc. Yeah. As I said in the about description, due to the nature of changes, which is cross cutting between data proc and EMR, releasing changes back to the upstream is not feasible and not intended. So yeah. due credit to uh, the open source uh, mm -hmm. guys who did this. I picked it up. Uh, we decided to fork it, keep it for the public to use. So yeah. you now have data proc and EMR. Yeah, and I was curious, how, how difficult was it to change from data proc to EMR and other yeah. AWS operators? Good. So I, I specialize on EMR. So um, uh, that's what I do. So picking up how EMR works was easy part. Picking up how they wrote for Google was a bit challenging. And knowing Hadoop, uh, because I've been doing this for 2009 uh, or something like that, so it was easy. And if you really follow the documentation and the API, it was not that of a great uh, effort, seriously. But uh, the outcome that we got for the customer, it was rewarding. So uh, yeah, I, I said I can still code. I cannot code probably like um, the engineers out there, but I can manage it. So. Uh, this is how it uh, was developed, yeah. Uh, 